To achieve high yields, it's important to understand your soil's capacity to hold nutrients. And this characteristic is highly influenced by cation exchange capacity, or CEC. CEC is the soil's ability to hold cations. Soils are made up with a number of different things, including clay and organic matter, which are negatively charged. And these negative charges have the ability to hold positive charges, just like a magnet. Those positively charged ions are called cations. The particular ones we talk about when we're talking about CEC is calcium, potassium, hydrogen, sodium, and magnesium. The soil has the ability to exchange one cation, calcium, for say hydrogen. So that is your cation exchange. The capacity then would be its ability to hold certain nutrients. You can picture a high CEC versus a low CEC soil like different parking lots. A lower CEC soil just has a few parking spots out there where a high CEC soil has a number of different opportunities for all those positive charges to attach and be held within that soil. CEC is kind of that starting point to determine base saturation. You know, my CEC is the ability of the soil to hold specific nutrients, whereas base saturation is more of those nutrients where are they parked? CEC is one of the first things we look at on a soil test because it gives us a quick picture of what that soil's holding capacity is. And it also tells us pretty easily if we're working with a sandy soil or if we're working with a heavier clay type soil. I may get a grower from Georgia that tells me his hard ground versus his sandy ground. When I get a CEC back, he's talking about his hard ground being 10, his sandy ground would be two. In his perspective, Tin is his harder ground. By the same notion, I've got a grower that has a CEC of 30. When he talks about his low or his sandy soil, it may only be 20. So the perspective of low or high CEC is determined about what your expectation of sandy versus clay is. For a grower that's looking to apply nutrients, CEC is pretty critical. And especially nitrogen or sulfur, those nutrients that are highly leachable in a sandier soil, they're not gonna stick around as long and they're very susceptible to leaching or movement off-site, so your crop can no longer use that. What's important from that standpoint is its ability to look at how much nitrogen I should ever apply at one point in time. If you've got a low CEC, say 10, you take that number times 10 and that's the ability of a soil to hold how many pounds of nitrogen. So if you've got a CEC of 10 times 10, that's 100 pounds of nitrogen should be applied at any one point in time. That individual in Iowa or Illinois might have the opportunity to apply his nitrogen source in the fall of the year. It's there for the spring. That individual in Georgia, if he tried to apply all of his nitrogen in the fall application, there's a pretty good likeliness that would not be there for his crop in the spring. So he's going to have to split apply his nitrogen based off of his nutrient holding capacity, which is CEC. This is why we need to watch that nutrient level when we're making our recommendations to make sure that we're applying nutrients correctly so they can get there for plant uptake, but not have that risk of environmental loss. Today we talked about CEC. Our next video will connect CEC to the percent based saturation. For more information, go to our website at agroliquid.com.